And we're back with some more FHM 9, and this time we are starting a new franchise mode. And I was initially going to do a team in Europe. However, that was before I found out that there would be college teams available to play in FHM 9. So we have job offers from three NCAA teams in Wisconsin, Western Michigan, and RPI. So let's take a look at each of their rosters here. Wisconsin Badgers. To four-star potentials, I mean, of course, these are all e-scouting grids because we don't you know, necessarily know about them being unemployed at the moment. So I guess we're not going to get a deep look at any of these rosters until we actually take over one of them. Then you have Western Michigan. They're not looking as deep just based off what we're seeing here. And then you have RPI Engineers. They're looking probably the weakest of the three. I mean, maybe they're not, but uh, just based off what we're seeing here, they're definitely the weakest. Yeah, you can even see on their team weaknesses. They have weaknesses at defense and forward, and their current team outlook is rebuild. No strengths. Uh, Western Michigan has a strength at left D, a weakness in goal and at forward. And then Wisconsin has strengths at forward and right D, just weaknesses at goal and lefty. So I, I have no idea how this college stuff is going to work as far as managing the team, because I know there's there's obviously no trades, there's no free agency, so it'll be really interesting to see how uh, managing a college-based team is going to work here. And there's no draft either, so I'm, I'm assuming there's something to replace the draft for recruiting players, right? So I'm tempted to go Wisconsin just because of that, because, you know, obviously they're the most filled out team already, just based off their strengths. But Western Michigan does look like they have something you could build off of. I mean, you have Berger and Sjallund, it looks like, as their best players, both on left defense. So I guess that explains their strength at left defense. Yeah, I think I'll go with Western Michigan here. I'll go four four seasons at 110000 There you go. There it is. We are now officially the general manager of the Western Michigan Broncos. And as expected, the NCAA has no trade deadline no salary cap, and no salary floor. So it'll be, as I said, it'll be interesting to see how we go about managing a college team here as opposed to the NHL because, as we see, trade offer is blanked out and so is free agent center. So it seems the only way to actually get new players is through commitments and national signing day, it looks like. So let's familiarize ourselves with the league rules here. There are 61 teams in the NCAA, seven conferences, a maximum age of 25 years old, obviously no free agents, no restrict free agents, no offer sheets. Looks like the same game rule set as the NHL. There are 44 games during the regular season. Playoffs start on March 14th. You can have up to 35 players on the active roster. All right, good to know. So at least, at least uh, we won't have to worry about sending players down and waivers and all that. All right, yeah, this is, this is what I thought. Player acquisition. Player recruitment is handled via the verbal commitments and signing day events, which operate in a similar manner to drafts in other leagues. However, with a major difference being, rather than picking players, each team uses its turn to nominate a player, and then every other team gets a chance to compete for the player, including full and partial scholarship offers. Players will evaluate their offers and choose a team based on various factors, presence of scholarship, quality of the team, how close the team is to his hometown. All right, that's good. I was worried about that. Academic quality of the school, the cost of attending the school without a scholarship, etc. Okay. Verbal commitments are on January 1st. They're the first stage of recruitment procedure. Can nominate players as young as age 15, but the commitment is not binding at that point, obviously. However, having a verbal commitment from the player gives the team a huge advantage in finalizing his acquisition on signing day. Each team's scouting strength in the player's region will also provide a bonus to the bid for the player. Okay, that's important. That's definitely important. I'm glad I looked at this. And then National Signing Day is November 10th. And the players that we sign will join our team the following season. Yeah, it begins on the next July 1st for the winning team. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely a whole different uh, system with the college hockey here. So I'm assuming most of the players that we get here are going to be American because... That is what the majority of our roster is made up of right now. Ooh, we don't have a whole lot of money for coaches, unfortunately, or staff in general. Only 232000 remaining, so we're not going to be able to get a great head coach, it doesn't look like. As of right now, our only coach is Earl Fletcher. So if I could just sign one coach here, that'd be good. Like, it doesn't even have to be great. I'm just talking like like someone like this, Pekka Hirvikoski. I mean, nothing about him is particularly great, but he doesn't have any terrible ratings either. His weakest... Rating his offensive skills at 7. 
but all of his ratings are better than mine, so he would be, be a better coach than I am, that's for sure. Marco Coskella wouldn't be bad either. 15 player management as well. Actually, he might be better. He's cheaper too. Ooh, Matt Becca. He's offensive preference, physical preference, aggressive line matching tendency. Actually, I think I might have found a new front runner here. Yeah, because his, his miscellaneous ratings are pretty good too. Like all around, like 15s, 14s everywhere. So as long as I can actually afford him, yes, I can. Hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll keep looking for a little bit, but, but Matt Becca is definitely the front runner so far. Yeah, I'm liking the look of Matt Becca here. He's 36, so he's going to be sticking around for a while, presuming we decide to re-sign him when the time comes. And he's got solid ratings all around, really, besides coaching goaltenders. But I, I think our other coach has that covered. So yeah, Matt Becca, you are going to be our new head coach for, I'll give you two seasons. Yeah, Earl Fletcher has goalies covered. He's got coaching goalies at 18, so that's actually perfect. I do want one more assistant coach here, but I also want to have enough money for scouts. And considering that scouting strength apparently plays a role in recruiting players, I don't want to ignore that. So I want to make sure that I'm hiring as many scouts from the upper Midwest as possible. So Marty Nan would be a good hire, I think. Uh, not interested, okay. <laughs> Rasmus Sjöland, perfect. I think I'll get you for four seasons. Although he, he was a bit old, he, I think he was like 65, so I, I, I'm not sure if he's going to actually stick around for that whole time, but it'll be good to have him for this season at least. Get Frank Golden as well. Nope, he's not interested, okay. About Cal Farley, not interested. How about George Mason? Okay, I'll accept it. Todd Collins from Minnesota, not interested. And there's a lot of scouts who aren't interested. We only have 87,000 remaining. Oh, Mark Howe. <laughs> Look at that. I just We just finished up the Hartford Whalers GM mode, and here's one of the stars of that series. Mark Howe, 67 years of age, excellent ability, and based in Michigan, so ugh, not interested. Come on, Mark. <laughs> That'd be great to get him on board after just finishing up the Hartford Whalers there. Sean Deneen, no. Looks like no one's just, looks like there's not a whole lot of guys interested. Drake Braun, maybe? No. All right, so I've gone ahead and signed a team of scouts. We have $19,000 in staff budget remaining, so we cannot really afford anybody else at this point. But we do have all the essentials. We have a head coach. We have an assistant coach. We have a pretty good scouting team for America. Obviously, no other scouts in any other regions, but still, that's the majority of the players that we're going to be getting, so... Wanted to make sure we focused on America. And now with that out of the way, let's take a look at our roster and see what we're working with. So in goal, you have Hambly, Rowe, and Lorson. Hambly and Rowe look to be our one-two punch. William Hambly, pretty good with rebounds and recoveries. Reflexes as well. Decent mental category. And Cameron Rowe looks pretty well-rounded. Nothing he's particularly strong in, but nothing he's weak in either. And then Lorson, yeah, he's just... He's not uh, up to par. But I suppose it's good to have him on the roster if we need him. On defense, you have Carter Berger. He is an offensive defenseman based off these ratings here. Pretty good physically, pretty good mentally. And I I'm not entirely sure how to gauge these ratings relative to the NCAA. But considering he has a three-star ability, I would guess he's, he's probably considered like a top four defenseman on a really good team. And then you got Samuel Soland, also appears to be an offensive defenseman. Two and a half star ability, five star potential. Then you have Zach Galambos, he's 25. I can't imagine he'll be staying any longer than this year. Also an offensive defenseman, so plenty of offensive defensemen to go around here in Western Michigan. 15 bravery, nothing really spectacular about any of these guys really. You have Cedric Fiedler, 21 years of age. Looks to be more of a two-way defenseman. He's got the four star potential, but is he graduating soon? Looks like our only defensemen who are graduating are Berger and Galambos. Then you have Rome. Perbix, Gallant, and Pollen. Then you have Daniel Hilsendagger. He is a defensive defenseman based off his major role, but we'll see how effective he is at actually being a defensive defenseman with those ratings. Then you have Aiden Fulp, definitely defensive defenseman. One star ability, two star potential. Then you have Jacob Bauer and Lucas Mata. Half star ability, half star potential. Yeah, really nothing special with either of these guys. All right, now look at forwards. You have Cole Gallant with a two and a half star ability, two and a half star potential. All around two way forward, it looks like. Then you have Max Sasson, 21 years of age, two and a half star ability, three and a half star potential. Jason Pollen, the captain, it appears. He is 23 years of age. I believe he was one of the guys graduating. Two and a half star ability, three star potential. It looks like it's, everyone's just like average. Jack Perbix with the two star ability, five star potential, but I believe he was one of the ones who's also graduating, is he not? Yeah. Then you have Cole Birch. 
Uh, Dylan Wentz, definitely an offensive player here. Then you have Wyatt Shinguth, one half star ability, five star potential. And he's only 19, so he's going to be sticking around for a couple of years, I would imagine. Then you have Hugh Larkin, 23, one half star ability, two and a half star potential. Pretty good positionally. Ryan McAllister with the one and a half star ability, one and a half star potential. It looks to be more of an offensive player, but uh, even his offensive ratings aren't great. Ethan Walders, one and a half star ability, two star potential. I'd imagine he's more of a defensive player. But as you can see, we're starting to get to the point where there's not really a whole lot to be impressed about with any of these players from here on out. Cam Knubel, definitely a better defensive player than offensively, using a penalty kill maybe. 14 stick checking, 14 positioning. Luke Granger, really nothing special. He's got the one and a half star ability, one and a half star potential. And you have Barrett Brooks, 20 years of age, one star ability, four star potential. Oliver McDonald's, one star ability, one and a half star potential. You have Theo Thrun, one star ability, one and a half star potential. Mental rating's not good. Timmy Wash, half star ability, half star potential. So we're starting to get to that point in the roster <laughs> where, yeah, all, these guys are just. Not great. All right. And let's take a look at the unsigned page. So so I'm guessing these are our players who have already committed and just haven't been placed on our roster yet. I'm, I'm guessing that's what this is because I can't do anything to sign them, even though it's July 1st. So within our prospects pool, you got Jacob Napier, who we don't know anything on. It seems we don't know anything about any of these guys besides possibly their potential, but even that's just an e-scouting grade, so that even that's not accurate. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what kind of players they are when they join our roster, whenever that may be. I, I think that would be next year for these guys, right? Because most of them are 17, and there's even a 16-year-old in there. I can't imagine he joins this year. <laughs> he's, he's got at least a year or two. I mean, there are a few 19-year-olds in here, Mitchell, Napier, and Yavish. But uh, I, I guess we'll just have to learn as we go here in college hockey because I'm not too familiar with how this any of this is working. And it doesn't look like there's anything else left to do here in the offseason. So I guess we'll just get straight to the preseason because it's not like we can sign free agents or make any trades. We got all our staff signed. Uh, yeah, not much else to do but simulate up to the preseason, I believe. All right, so we're on September 23rd now, about to start the preseason and we have a few notifications here. A few players who are academically ineligible, apparently. Freshman Samuel Soland has been ruled academically ineligible for the upcoming season and will not be able to play games this season. Do you wish to give him academic redshirt status for this season so he has another chance of gaining eligibility next year? If he redshirts, he'll be unable to play this year but will remain on your team. If you not let him redshirt, he'll leave your program and play elsewhere. Huh. So I wonder what brought this about. Is, is this just like random or something? Is this just something that happens randomly? Seems like they're all freshmen too. Freshman Ryan McAllister, freshman Jason Poland. Wait a minute, wasn't, isn't Poland like graduating this year? Graduating. Yeah, he's graduating. How is he a freshman then? Yeah, it says right here he's a senior. Yeah, that's definitely a bug there. It says he, he, it says here he's a freshman, but when you go into his profile, it says he's a senior. Lucas Mata, I could see him being a freshman. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has any experience. I believe McAllister is a freshman as well. Yeah, McAllister is a freshman, Siolan's a freshman, and Mata is a freshman. But Poland, he is definitely a senior. <laughs> so that's, that's odd. That is odd that it would say that he's a freshman when he is not. Definitely something for the devs to look into there. So I guess I do want to keep Siolan since he's a freshman and he's a pretty good player based on his talent and potential, but it's unfortunate that he's not going to be able to play for us this year. So like, how many, play how many red shirts can I have then? Like, is there any limit? to the amount of red shirts I can have. It doesn't appear to be anywhere in the rules, so I would guess not. All right, so I'll say yes to Sjoland. He agrees to your suggestion, okay? So he's not gonna be able to play for us this year, unfortunately. Ryan McAllister, I may as well just say yes for all these guys, right? Like there's, there doesn't appear to be any penalty for saying yes, or, or is there a limit to the amount of play? Like I, I'm a bit confused on this. Let's see, redshirting. Since your players are student athletes, they must maintain their grades in order to play. Players, particularly those with lower intelligence ratings, may lose their academic eligibility. Is that, is intelligence like a hidden attribute or something? Because I don't think there's any intelligence rating. Yeah, there's no intelligence rating there. So if I go to edit, uh, I'm going to have to turn on commissioner mode here. Is there like an intelligence rating in the attributes? There is. Hmm. Okay, like, I, I wish I was able to see what this is without going into their hidden attributes. Like, is there any way to tell that? Can I see on his player report? Like, here it doesn't say anything about Rose intelligence. Not from what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't see anything on Rose intelligence. So if, if you have something like intelligence, I, I really feel like that shouldn't be hidden. <laughs> like, that, that should not be a hidden attribute, at least 
not in this set in the NCAA setting. Like there, there should be something that tells you how likely they are to be academically ineligible. You know, like that's a huge thing. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just part of the challenge of it. But uh, like again, it just seems very. That, that seems too random for my liking. So I guess since Poland's a senior, does it really matter with him? Because he's graduating anyway. So if he's not playing this year, he's not going to be eligible next year no matter what. I, I mean, what if I said yes? He, he agrees? Okay. I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll just we'll have to see what happens as we go along here. Because this is all so very new to me. And I am really curious as to how this is going to work. Ryan McAllister. I mean, I once again, I guess there's no penalty for saying yes. He's not willing to red shirts and has left your program. Okay. I mean, is there any reason why he is not willing to red shirt? Is, is it he just wants to play somewhere, I guess? I mean, I, I suppose that's reasonable. So then Lucas Mata, what do you say? He, he agrees. Okay. So he's on our roster once again. Okay, so I think with that, we'll get the preseason out of the way. Just see how this team simulates. Looks like there's only four preseason games here. All right, let's see the preseason stats. So Galambos. Led our team with the most points as a defenseman with four. And you have Perbix with three in three games. Two for Birch, Larkin, Gallant, Wathers, and Went. Now let's see in goal, you have a 934 save percentage for Cam Rowe. And for William Hambly, you have an 875 in one game played. All right, so I think with that, we'll end things off here. And in the next one, we will get through year number one with your Western Michigan Broncos. And hopefully we'll start to understand a little bit more about managing an NCAA team. Because clearly... It's a much different system than what we're used to with the NHL. So with that, I'll end this one off here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.